Hello humanoids, welcome to Halfling Hobbies. I'm Halfling Hannah. And a few weeks ago, I made a video about why Tasha's puzzles are hideous, as well as giving some possible corrections to make them a little bit better. However, today I thought it would be fun to really focus on puzzles and how DMs can create puzzles that all of their players will love. So here we go. DMs, the first thing that all puzzles should include is some kind of immediate danger. Whether this is time running out and something will happen when said time does run out, or enemies in the room, there should be something that makes this puzzle uh, immediate and dangerous. This gives your players a certain sense of urgency and um, kind of mitigates the boredom factor that sometimes can come with puzzles and not being able to quite figure them out and just spend way too long just sitting there staring at each other because that's no fun. But if there's some kind of combat or something uh, stressful along with it, then this can create the needed push to get players to think creatively and to really work together to solve the problem as opposed to simply letting the smart player do it. Some of my favorite ways that this happens are actually demonstrated in all of the Indiana Jones movies, especially the one where they're looking for the Holy Grail. I accidentally called it Indiana Jones and the Search for the Holy Grail one time and didn't realize I was combining two movies. And then when I thought about it, I was like, oh my gosh, I would watch that movie. That would be amazing. But. Indiana Jones has some amazing puzzles in it that have immediate danger and also appeal to all of our types of players. For example, the opening one in the first movie where Indiana Jones has to figure out how to switch uh, the, the idol for the bag of sand. He's, he's trying to figure out how heavy it needs to be, but he can't pick it up. This is a classic puzzle, and when he gets it wrong, then there is an immediate and and dangerous consequence to it. I love puzzles like this. They are simple, they have a consequence that your players definitely don't want to happen, and they encourage players to work together. Another one is the example of the bridge of faith, the leap of faith. I love this one because it includes a riddle, right? He reads the riddle and he has to try and figure out what this riddle means. And when he finally does figure out, he realizes that it's as simple as a leap of faith. He has to take a step off the cliff and to his surprise and our surprise there is actually a bridge there but it's an optical illusion and you can't see it. This is an amazing puzzle and one that I'm sure all of your players will love because who's the one that's going to step out on that leap of faith? That's right, it's gonna be your barbarians, it's gonna be your monks, it's gonna be those that have a really high hit point base because if something does go wrong and they fall, they're the ones that can best withstand it. Things like this, these um, immediate dangers and these obvious consequences are way more engaging and exciting for players than simply sitting down and trying to figure out a word puzzle. Sorry, Tasha's. Number two, and it kind of goes in with those immediate dangers, is tactile solutions. I personally am not a fan of any solutions that the players have to kind of uh, think abstractly and think outside of their immediate realm. Um, again, if you watch my Tasha's video, that's my biggest gripe about the puzzles, is that all of them have the same solution, and that solution is not in any way one in which players would immediately come up with, as opposed to something tactile in the room that you have described. They are far more likely to interact with objects and things that you describe and try and figure those out than to think of something um, like the number of uh, letters in a word. Mm. So if you have something, for example, like three potions set on a table, each of the potions have a different effect. Your players have to drink the correct potion in order to see the solution to the puzzle. However, the other potions have very adverse effects. One of them could even be a very strong potion. Who is the one who's going to actually drink these potions? 
probably your uh, dwarf or barbarian, again, someone with a really strong constitution, right? But your wizard is going to be the one who tries to figure out the riddle to figure out which potion they should drink. Now, this is an excellent example of how you can incorporate teamwork into a puzzle where each one of the classes has a clear and defined role and feel like they're contributing and not left out. <sighs> Speaking of potions, I'm feeling a bit parched. Why don't we head on over to the Tasty Tavern and see what we can brew up. Hello humanoids, welcome to the Tasty Tavern. Today we're going to make a potion of double sight. This is a really cool potion to give to your uh, players and you can even use it in your puzzle. Simply changing one or two ingredients makes this potion different colors. Uh, so let's get started, here we go. First thing that we're going to need is some kind of tequila. Make sure that it's good tequila though because it's a potion of double sight for a reason. There's a lot of tequila in it, so you want to make sure that it's not really bad tequila. So we're going to use an ounce and a half of tequila. That was closer to two ounces, but hey, double sight, right? Next we're going to go with half an ounce of an orange liqueur. Uh, in this case we're using triple sec. and half a cup of uh, your favorite sweet and sour mix. You can make your own or just buy it from the store. Next, to add a little sweetness and a cool color, we're going to add some blue coroco. Half an ounce. So this is our potion of double sight. What's really cool about this is you have this neat little uh, Kind of like a teal color to it. If you add a drop of red food coloring, then you can have purple. And if you substitute out the blue croco and put in some limoncello, then you have yellow. So you can actually have three different color potions all in one drink. All right, let's go back over to the other side. Ah, that is a tasty potion. So, I love tactile solutions, whatever it is. It could be statues that need to be moved. It could even be enemies that need to be defeated in a specific order. And defeating them out of that order actually spawns more of that type of enemy. Anything where you can incorporate immediate danger and tactile solutions, that's going to engage everyone in your party. The best is when you have your barbarian engaged in some kind of feat strength. Feat strength. Other way around. Feat of strength or feat of bravery that they're trying to accomplish while the wizard and... Um, your smarter players are in the background trying to solve this riddle. Those are the ones that will engage all members of your party. Number three. I like to have multiple solutions, if at all possible. I like to kind of think through the puzzle and think, okay, what else can I put in the room that my players could possibly find that could be a different solution to this puzzle? Perhaps it's a fail safe or it's a secret path or entrance that the owner of this place uses to avoid said puzzle. Uh, with a really high DC investigation, maybe they find that. I'm also kind of a fan of having a smash the thing option. If your players are fiddling with a puzzle box and there's something inside of it that's very important, if your barbarian wants to smash it, let them smash it. Now I'm not saying the thing inside will survive said smashing, but hey, sometimes it's fun to smash it. But thinking through both an intellectual and a more physical or dexterous option for solving a puzzle is a great way to ensure that your players are always engaged. If they come to learn that your puzzles have multiple options for solving them, they're far more likely to interact with them going forward. Which leads me to the next one, number four, be okay with off the wall solutions. Inevitably, no matter how much you have thought through a puzzle, your players are gonna find a way to solve it that you did not intend. Instead of just saying, no, you can't do that, let them do it, let them have fun with it, just roll with it. If it seems like something that is creative, that uh, could 
actually work, let that be the solution to the puzzle. Just because you've come up with something very specific doesn't necessarily mean that has to be the solution to the puzzle. The beautiful things about puzzles are that <laughs> your players don't know if you have come up with a solution and if you have, what that solution is. Sometimes it's fun just to give your players a situation and see what they do with it. And then whatever they do, yep, that's the solution to the puzzle. <laughs> I, some of you are probably cringing really hard at that, but it is really fun and you should definitely try it because hilarious things happen. It's like a little social experiment. It's great. And then finally, my last uh, tip for creating puzzles is to use them sparingly. Puzzles should guard something important. They should be uh, kind of like a test as opposed to just something to throw at your players just because. If they are on the trail of a cult and they are trying to infiltrate their temple or secret hideout, this is a great time for tests of faith, i.e. puzzles. Puzzles should really be to keep outsiders outside, whereas insiders know uh, the solutions and can do them without much trouble. Because it would really suck if you were trying to get into your home and you constantly had to solve your own puzzles. Puzzles guard things that are important, which means you shouldn't use them all that often. They should only be used to, to show your players that this thing is really important. If you would like a resource to help you create puzzles that all of your players will love that follow these rules, then I have the template for you. I created this puzzles template page for your DM binder over on Canva. Now I'm not supported by Canva or anything like that, but I do very much love using it because I can create some cool things like this. Here is the link to go to this page where you can add it to your own Canva profile and rearrange things and add things however you would like. If you don't necessarily know how to make puzzles like this or feel comfortable doing it or you simply don't have the time to make puzzles and you would like to download some ready to play, well then you can go over to Patreon and support me there where I upload lots of DM resources every single month. For the month of February, I am going to be doing puzzles. I will be uploading puzzles of various difficulty all month long that you can simply download and put in your DM binder and use whenever you want. So if you want to support Halfling Hobbies and what we're doing here so that we can make even more DM resources and videos for you, then please head on over to Patreon. Also, you can like and subscribe here on YouTube to support me and the videos that I'm making. So until next time, my friends, may your game have advantage. Halfling Hannah here, signing out.